What's going on, people? Welcome to the match preview as we look ahead to the game against Fulham on the weekend. Massive game, London derby. You might be thinking, why is it a massive game? I think this is a real starting point to see how we compete against sides that are similar level to us this season. I think it's another away game. Um, we've lost two away games this season under Roy Hodgson, so another test there as well. So you know what? I'm actually excited about the game, and I'm joined by Stan here to look ahead to the game. And more, as always, if you do enjoy the content, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to Nomi Sound Future Palace content. And let us know your thoughts on the game in the comment section down below. Stan, London Derby, as I said it, it's a game to test ourselves exactly where we're at. Because in away games this season, not that we've been dreadful under Roy, but in the two games that we've lost, it's been away from home, Wolves and Tottenham. And this is a side that you'd expect Palace to compete or try to go and get a result. I think this should be a competitive game. How do you uh, how do you see the game? I think it will. It should be competitive. And I think it's important that we show up. I know there's not really very much to play for at all. It's the second last game of the season. Um, but they've been better than us this year. They have. They've had mm. a really, really good season. They're flying. They struggled a little bit when Mitro was out for a couple of weeks. Um, and then even before he came back, they've gone and smashed a couple of couple of other teams into God knows where. Um, but um, yeah, I think it will be, uh, it's an important game. I think we need to show up and um, it'll be a good test of how good a side we really are. Yeah. And and look, they're what, in a league table, we'll talk about league table anyways, but in terms of where they are, they're 10th, we're 12th and they've surprised a lot of teams and they could still finish ninth. So Fulham are not on the beach like Brentford was. That's why I'm expecting a different game. Brentford, mm -hmm. not Brentford, sorry, Bournemouth. Um, Bournemouth, I feel like their season is done and they've realised they've had a long yeah. season. The objective was to stay up. I think they've stayed up now and they're more relaxed. Whereas Fulham, yes, the objective was to stay up, but they've still got something to play for. They could, you know, still finish above Brentford. But I wanted to ask this question to you. How much do you care about certain London derbies? Like, for example, for me, when we face Arsenal, that game is much bigger than when we face Fulham. Is it all in the same wavelength as you? Or do you care? Don't you care? I do care. Um, I think every London derby, I think the one that matters the most to me is West Ham. Um, mm. yeah, but... true. West Ham, Arsenal, Tottenham. I'm not really as far, not so much, honestly. Arsenal, not so much because we, we've beaten them a few times and we haven't really competed with them over the years anyway. Like they, they're obviously you know they're better than us. Tottenham, because well, it's just a bit of a dead, like a, a dead oh, rubber. That's awful, on. yeah. It's honestly, I, I yeah. never want to face Tottenham again. It's just dreadful yeah. facing them. Well, like West Ham, I think. Listen, Fulham. I think it's a it's a game where we we should go and get something. Do you know what I mean? I think it is. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, I I think we should be aiming to go and win the game and at least get a point. Yeah, battle of the Roy. Let's talk about Hodgson because the reports are coming out ahead of this game that Hodgson wants to stay for another year. Parish potentially might want to keep him for another year. Stan, without going into much detail, because we already spoke about it in other shows um, and uh, live Palace News, so make sure to go check that out. Um, I know a lot of people do actually want Hodgson to stay, which was surprising. Where do you stand with this whole situation about Hodgson staying on for another year? I think it's showing that we're not progressing as a club. Listen, I love him. I think he's done wonders for this club and for the, for the borough of Croydon. Um, and especially coming back and listen, he, we were in a right rut under Vieira um, and he couldn't get the essays of this world playing and he's got a tune out of him and, you know, yeah, he's had easier games, but there's nothing suggesting that Vieira would have won games in this style at all. Do you know what I mean? And he's done really well. He's come in yeah, and, and done it, but it was only meant to be a short term fix. Why is there no plan? Why is it always a Band-Aid solution with Steve Parrish and Crystal Palace Football Club? Do you know what I mean? There are managers available, right? Graham Potter, Fonseca, Arnie Slot. There's three managers there that we should be going after. I think one of them will come. You know, I do. Why are you going after Roy Hodgson? I've read on Twitter people are like, I will only accept this if we spend the whole of next year looking for a successor. I was like, come on, do you think they're going to spend the next whole of next year looking for a successor? Why, why do you need another year? I mean, I yeah. spoke about this with T, but... They seriously considered second Vieira last year, February. So surely by that moment till now, you should have thought about alternative plans. Hodgson, fine, short-term solution. But for me, I think it raises a bigger question of what 
they want to do going forward. Because right yeah. now, you've got Brendan Rodgers, as you mentioned, with Graham Potter. So if you keep Hodgson for one more season, what's going to change? Because the managers that are available right now make total sense to go for them right now. And if you can't yeah. attract them, then we've got a massive problem. If you can't attract the likes of Potter or Rodgers <laughs> or even the Arnie Slots, I mean, who are you going to attract and why can't you attract them? That's why, you know, we'll see what happens. But I guess this is a game for a lot of people to look at Roy and to say, you know, this is why he should lead us forward or maybe this is why he shouldn't lead us forward because there's already a few people saying, look what happened at Tottenham, look what happened at Wolves. And this is another away game where you expect a decent performance. And if we don't have one, then that's going to be like three away games struggling. And maybe some people who don't want Roy may start to get frustrated by this news about Roy potentially staying on for another year. So that's why this game has a bit more significance than I believe. I think if he does stay on another year, the whole fan base is going to be incredibly irritated next year because you know how it is. I know it's been good, these however many games he's had, but I'm telling you, he will pinpoint games that we're going to win and we'll win them and win them nicely. But then you'll go away to Man United or you'll go away to Newcastle or you'll go away even to the lights of Wolves and you'll get your ass handed to you because that is what he does. Okay. Now, if the club is just about staying in the Premier League, I can see why they're doing it. It's not what I, where I want to be. I think we should be looking to push up the table. We should be looking to finish top 10. We should be looking to go on a cup run. I don't think we'll finish in European places because we it's just we're not, we're not big enough. We're not good enough. But bringing Roy Hodgson back for another year is very, very short-sighted. And it is a band-aid solution. It's the easy option. And it will just it will tell everybody what Steve Parrish is all about. Um, if he's bringing back Roy Hodgson for another year. Yeah, yeah. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section as well about Roy Hodgson potentially staying on for another year at the club. But unfortunately, or well, depending on how you view the situation, the bad news doesn't really end there for those well, who don't want Roy to stay. Just on Roy Hodgson, don't believe anything from Talk Sport and the Sun. That's all I'm saying. Take it with a pinch of salt. Let's see. Saying that, but I won't be surprised, Stan. I'll say that. Ne- I, I, neither I would I. From, but I wouldn't be surprised that if this was happened. I, I kind of... Neither would I, but nothing surprises me, man. <laughs> yeah, I kind of thought about it last week. Like, maybe Hodgson is the one that ends up staying because it'll be the easier option. I and mean, we know with Palace, whatever the yeah. easier option is, that's that's the way that we normally go. But talking about easy options, it's not going to be easy losing this man, and that's Wilfred Zaha. It seems like he's out for the season, according to the Daily Mail. Do you think this is the last time we saw Wilf play for Palace in the game against Bournemouth? Yes. You reckon? Why, why yes. do you think he's gone? Because he's wanted to try something else for a long time. Um, I think, was it four years ago? Um, he was... Under Hodgson, um, yeah. Under Hodgson, he was, he, he was um, you know, very close to a movie. He wanted to go to Everton, <laughs> which is quite funny. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, it's actually crazy the fact that he uh, I, I remember I think he got sent home from training as well yeah he handed a transfer Everton. request like, that is mental um, like how on earth did he yeah, yeah. and it's it's hilarious it should where um, we were though huh like it should where we, it should where we were at the time as a football club yeah. that he desperately wanted to Everton like they were like a top four yeah. side they weren't a top four side there was, but there they, was were like, they were like they were pushing they were for right that now. top four and they had all these players and obviously top six maybe well not top four but yeah yeah, yeah they had Marco crazy. Silva as the manager and and stuff like that so I think um, yeah I, I, I just think he wants to try something else um, you know I think there'll be a couple of Premier League clubs in for him maybe an Arsenal or a Newcastle you know he's been an Arsenal fan this club he supported as a kid um, or a guy abroad um, and I don't think, you know, he's, they're saying he hasn't rejected it. I think in his heart of hearts, he knows he's off. Um, you'll get a good deal somewhere else. you get a nice signing on fee and maybe a longer term contract as well. I, I disagree, you know. I, I feel like he'll stay at Palace because I genuinely don't see who else offers Wilfred Zaha 200k a week. And I just don't. I just don't. Maybe he goes to Chelsea. Maybe Arsenal put an offer, but I just don't see 200,000 pounds a week. Do you really see, see that? You know, what? I don't see that. I just don't. But you That's know what I do Palace see? Is- I yeah. see him getting maybe 150 grand a week um, and a massive signing on fee. Um, yeah, but we can also, I mean, we'll probably be able to sort it something out. I don't know about massive signing on fee as well. I don't, I, I just don't see it. Yeah. I don't think clubs are desperate. I just don't think clubs are, are as desperate for Wilf as they were in the past. I just, I, I just don't see sense, where he he's like 30 years old. He's 30 years old. Yeah. Like, I, I don't see what team he walks into, really, though. Does he get into the Spurs team? I don't think so. 
He probably does, but then again, want to leave Palace for Spurs? Look at Spurs. Like, cool, they're bigger than us. Then um, he has a bigger chance of playing European football there. But it's not like the greatest alternative you get. You can easily go to Spurs and it doesn't work out, and he ends up on the bench there. So yeah, yeah so so for me, I, I'll be honest, I, I could I could easily see him stay. I could. Uh, if you pay up the two hundred thousand pound a week, you settle you settle that Palace. He doesn't get really that much guarantee. At other clubs in the Premier League, I don't know if he if he starts week in week out for Arsenal. He, I don't think he does. At Chelsea, he doesn't. And at Tottenham, potentially depending on who they bring in as a manager, who who they bring in as other players as well, in terms of options. So I could see him to stay in that Palace, but we're not going to have him for the Fulham game. So what, what happens in the Fulham game? In the short term, anyways, is it a case of are you down the left, Edward up front, or do you um, margin, might change up a bit? I just don't see him changing up. I'll no, he won't. I think he'll do. Uh, yeah, are you down the left? And unfortunately, one or two of those absolute donkeys that play up top for us. So we'll see. Yeah, but what what else could he do though? Do you think it goes to the lack of depth at a club, especially in the left hand side? Because I've said it before. Even if, even if we do keep Wolf, I feel like if you're talking about depth. We, we need to improve in that area because we just don't. Yep. Jeffrey Schlupp was our other option there. And he's not like he shouldn't be our He's injured as well, isn't he, right? So Yeah. And Wilf is injury prone at the moment. Like he's pulling up every couple of games and he's missing five games. And he's, you know, so let's see. Let, let's see what happens. Um, I think, um, but I do think he'll go Edward up top and... Uh, are you on the left? Are oh, you done all right on the left? Cutting in, he's, he's shown he's got some trickery with his feet. He can beat his man. Um, let's see what happens. Yeah, for me, I think I on the left has been a surprise because yeah. it makes sense, but I never really thought about it. But yeah, down the right hand side, you expect him to put balls into the box, cross it uh, with a strong foot. But on the left, he can cut in. He can cut in, and I think that's where yeah. you see his strengths as well. Um, mm-hmm. Down the right, we didn't really see that. But the problem is, he's going to cut in, and then he's going to be up front. We just you know, relying on basically you know saying what I, that what's your end? I've seen him come up. What about Mateta? What about Mateta? If it ain't Edward, what about Mateta? I just for me, I don't really care who it is up front. Mate, honestly, they're, they're both useless. I, I saw I saw what I saw Edward come on the past couple of games. He's rubbish, mate. He is and I've flown the flag for him. I have I said yeah, he's I he's the best well. finisher at the club. He can do this, he can do that. He's rubbish, mate. He he's just his head he's not interested. You reckon? Yeah, he's right, not interested, just, mate. He's on 100 grand a week, I've heard, and he's not interested. Well, I mean, if I'm earning 100k a week, then I'll be relaxed as well, innit? Let's just say that, <laughs> depending on I your know. situation, if you're 100k a week, just thinking about the summer, well, how am I going to spend that money in the summer? Am I going on a yacht? Am I going and buying a new car? But it's it's still sad, though. It's still sad because you're talking about professionals here. You get it. Um, I just don't think they're both good enough. And it's only two games. Thankfully, Wilf is out, injured only for two games. And it is, it's not some crazy, like, 15 games. Yeah. So, And these two games are pretty pointless at this point anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's not like it's going to be a game changer or season changer. But let's look at the league table. We mentioned Fulham and we mentioned Palace as well, where we are on the league table at the start of the show. But as we're heading into the game, we currently sit 12th. But we're basically joint 11th. Uh, the only thing that separates us and Chelsea is a goal difference. Um, mm-hmm. If we do lose this game, I don't think we'll drop down to 30 because of the goal difference. If we do win this game, I mean, Chelsea's got some hard games coming up as well. Surely it's the battle of 11th. If we finish anything lower than 12th at this point, I think that would be a disappointment. Because yeah. we've been like 12th for the last five months. <laughs> yeah. It's been I think we'd, crazy. yeah. I think we should aim to finish 11th. I think that'll be... Listen, I remember we had a, we had a show beginning of the season and... I think you and Patrick were like, no, we, we, this, is, this team's going to finish in the top 10, et cetera, et cetera. I did say that we'd finish bottom half, 14th to 17th. So I think I, I was wrong there. I think 11th, given what's gone on, is a is a good is a good season. It's one more place than last year. So <laughs> Steve Parrish would probably say it's a Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Extra £2 million. Pound. Extra £2 yeah. million. Pound in a yeah. So I guess the, there's improvements there. But yeah. Steve yeah. Parrish would probably say it's progression. But listen... <laughs> Um, we need to we need to be moving on up next year. I think we need to be looking up, and um, yeah, we 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 need to try and go out and get a result in the next two games. Mm, yeah, and we can equal forty nine points. I, I, the Fulham game is a massive test for me. I re, you know what? Before the Hodgson rumor started coming out, I was thinking, ah, oh, it's Fulham, it's fine. We're gonna play them. It's it's chill. 
But now that these rumors have come up, and now that I've been looking at you know the games that we have lost away from home, I think Fulham is a very good test. It's a very good test to see you know where we're exactly at. Let's see if we can put another performance. If, if saying that, I don't think losing to Fulham or beating Fulham is going to change my whole perspective on Roy because I still feel like there's better managers out there for like a long term picture right mm-hmm. now as it stands. But if we lose against Fulham and if it's another mediocre performance away from home, that's just going to raise more questions for me personally than I have already. Um, mm-hmm. But talking about Fulham, what have we made of this season? I can't lie, it's it's a it's been a surprise because not many people expected them to be top ten. I think they're not. Oh yeah, I think they guarantee top ten finish. If we bring up yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah, they guarantee. Yeah, we can't catch up to this. So yeah, top, guarantee top ten finish. But saying that, I don't think it's sustainable with the players that they've got. I feel like they need to go buy a, uh, buy a few more players. But Marco Silva's done a great job for them. Very good job. They've done very well. Um, but you know what? They sort of had some players or they got some players in that we should have probably got that could have like kicked us on a bit or helped us a little bit more, you know? Like they got in your man Pereira from United, Willian, obviously he's old, but he's like balling every week for him, isn't he? Um, who's the other one they've got? Um, the midfielder. I think we were linked with Pereira as well. We were, yeah, but they went and got him, right? Um, your other guy, he's injured for them at the moment, plays in the midfield. Very, very good. But Paulinho, oh, very, very Paulinho, good. yeah, he yeah. is he is a baller. Like he is you know, very good. He's 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 a gem. Yeah. Saying that we got Decore. We got Decore. That's yeah, how no. we're fine. That's how we're fine. Who Imagine is it? them Who two is... together. Imagine yeah, that's what I'm saying though. Together. Like obviously Decore is excellent, you know. My, he's probably my pick for player of the season. But what I'm looking you're looking at like they've got Harrison Reed, they've got Decord uh Bobby De Cordova Reed. They've got uh, 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 Anthony Robinson. Like, that team is stacked, dude. Like, they're a good team. <laughs> um, yeah. And, it, and it, they kind of remind me of Palace as well. I think we, do you think we've got a better squad than them? I think we do. Mm, I don't know, mate. Player. I think we do. I think we do. I feel like that's what I'm saying. Next season, I feel like they need to go out and strengthen and improve their squad. Because when you look at William, he's done good this season, but the longevity there, I'm not too sure. I'll, I'll still take Wilf over William. Mm. I'll take Eze. Over Pereira, I take Elise. Um, he was at that place down the right hand side for them. But in general, I feel like our attack is better than theirs. Midfield, well, I don't know, mate. Stri- midfield like, is the is one of the best strikers yes. in the league. Yeah, well, yeah. To be fair, they've got better. Yeah, hundred percent got better striker than us. But then the other attackers around them, I'm not. I'm not too sure. Let's know what you guys think in the comment section. Do you guys think that Fulham have got better, um, better squad than Palace? I, I feel like when you look at it. From 1 to 11, I feel like we will probably edge that. Even though we're blowing them in the league, I think Anderson... I think the, and table, I think the table talks differently, mate. Yeah, it does. But then again, we had that Vieira tax. So, <laughs> some, of these players weren't performing. Yeah, some of these players weren't playing at the, at the levels that they are playing right now um, yeah. for like four months or so. So, if there were, then would we still... And, and you know, despite us not winning for like how, however long, we're not even that far behind them. I know we're, we're not going to finish above them, but... Yeah, imagine if we if we had picked up more points in that period, which yeah. we probably should have. Um, but moving on to Palace side of things, Eze, 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 Eze. It seems like apparently a new deal for him as well on his way. England, I think this is a good test. This these two two games is a good test for him. He needs to continue this up if he wants to be called up to the England squad. There's been murmurs about it already, Stan. Do you think it's it's, it's already time for him to step up? Southgate I mean, should call him up. I I think he should, yeah. Um, because I think he's a he's a hell of a talent. Um, and I think he's not as young as you think either. He's 24 now. So he's obviously still got his best years ahead of him. But, you know, he's not as young as like an Elise, let's say, or a Jezrak Saki or, you know, um, a Tyreek. Um, but, um, yeah, I think uh, I think if he, can, if he can show up and show us what he's all about this weekend, especially, I don't, I don't, there's no, there, there should, he's going to give Southgate no reason not to select him because, uh, you know, <laughs> look at like, James Madison, who might come in, who we probably come in for. I mean, he's been terrible the last couple of weeks, right? So, exactly. And if you pick Madison over Eze right now, then you're going to raise big question marks about yeah. it. But then again, it's Southgate we're talking about, and Maguire still gets selected. So, God knows what's going to happen there. But for mm. me, I think I think with Eze, he needs to he needs to be on Southgate's radar. I think it would be absolutely foolish for Southgate not to even consider him. He's been on a great run of form. The, the, the thing with Eze is he needs to continue this because we're talking about, what, less than 10 games in this run of form? Before the 10 games, 
let's be honest, under Vieira, he wasn't playing as much. And if he, even when he was coming on the pitch, he wasn't a player that was confident on the yeah. levels that he is now. But if he continues this, I think Southgate would be absolutely foolish to not select him in the England squad. Because right now, even the numbers suggest that goals, assists, even his passing, everything. Everything suggests that Eze should be called up to the England squad. But I think he needs to make sure he steps up to the plate in the next few games. So sure. next time around, when the squad selection happens, Southgate can say, you know what, you have performed in a small sample of games. 10 games is not that that much, but it's also not that little as well. Yeah. Let me call you up to the England squad. And Southgate did call him up before, so I have no worries about it. You know, if he continues performing the next few games, I feel like he'll get called up. But also, um, Gay and Anderson, I think that's two two players to look out for as well in this game because Mitrovic is going to be a target. Yeah, and he's the, they they can they play two different types of football for them. They either play on the wings or they play it long to him. So, mm. and either way, it goes to him. So it'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what about score predictions then? How are we seeing it going? Because I can't lie. <laughs> I can't call this one. Oh, part of me says... I'll be honest, I'm more leaning towards Fulham getting a result than Palace. Funny enough. I really want to win, though. <laughs> you really do want to win. Of course, I really want to win as well. But do yeah. you have the feeling that we'll go and win? I think it'd be a draw. So, go on. What's the score prediction? 0-0? 1-0? 2-2. 2-2. 3-3? 2-2. I'm going to go for 1-0. I think I, I think it could easily be a draw as well. I think Fulham don't underestimate them. I don't think they're going to be on the beach like Bournemouth are. I think this is a great testing point for Roy about leading us into next year because if it's another disappointing performance away from home and another defeat, then probably more, as I said, you're going to ask more questions about it. But I'm going to go for 1-0. Stan is going for 2-2. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section down below and your general thoughts ahead of the game. Thank you to everyone who's watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. And let's see what happens. But until next time, up the pace.